hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. <sighs> it's finale time for The Haunting of Hill House. Like, the episode I most want to see right now and most never want to see. I never want this show to be over. So I don't know if there's going to be a season two or if this is it, but honestly, this season has been perfectly formed. Oh, ghost dogs. Last episode I watched twice and just, I'm still marvelling at it now. There were so many devastating moments in that episode. Like each time I thought to myself, this is, well actually like way back in episode four, the twin thing with Luke, I was like, this is as sad as this show is going to get. This is really sad. And then Bentnick really happened. And I was like, it it just, it can't get any sadder than this, surely. And then nine, that conversation with, so it's Nell, little Nell, little Luke in bed and Olivia's talking to them and they are laying out their traumatised futures is one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my life like really I've had time to take it in now and I'm still like that was because it wasn't like just sad boohoo sad you, know, you have moments where you might cry more like they're just like the music or something like that which kind of makes you actually cry more but that like it devastated me on a like on a core level as a person it was just and I, I can't imagine watching that as a parent I, I don't, I'm not a parent I can imagine if you were watching that as a parent it would be even worse because I think most people's worst fear when they have kids is you know a that their kids are going to die but I think second to that, like that they're gonna fuck them up, and ah, oh, and just the fact that it was like this awful future that she was being shown was the inevitable future if she tries to protect them in the way that Poppy's doing. So Poppy's leading her to create that future for her kids, and I'm fucking pissed at that ghost. I'm so angry. I don't think I've ever been as angry at a ghost in, in anything. It just felt like such a violation of Olivia's motherhood and like these amazing instincts that she had and they just get turned around. And it also made me think about like you hear stories like this where um, either like children are in extreme, actually in extreme danger, like, you know, they're about to burn in a house fire or something, you know. Um, and parents take their steps but also I can remember there was a case when I was a kid I think I was about 13 or 14 and um it sticks in my mind because the woman looked like my mum and it really scared the shit out of me not that my mum would ever do this but the, the poor woman was schizophrenic and hadn't been on a medication and she was convinced that like some monster was coming to kill her kids and she ended up killing all of her kids it was just so sad and, and it made me think about this like if they did a snafu ending and actually Olivia was just mentally ill it wouldn't be any less sad or tragic for me I wouldn't be like oh no there weren't any ghosts I'd just be like fuck me that's even worse I preferred it when there were ghosts because at least then there's like you know some outside external force there's something deeply horrific about not being able to trust your own mind um so yeah that that episode just gutted me I, I loved all the little touches the fact that that clock ghost man fixer thing with the mustache he he's like is he driving this process because it sure as shit felt like it at points in that and I finally saw a ghost. I think that's like two or three I've seen in this whole season. I knew there were several prefaces, so the score is low, guys. But as I said, I'm not deliberately playing, but I thought if I see anything, I'll say it. And that fucking face in the glass. Go watch the last episode if you don't know what I'm talking about. But um, 
oh, I'm, I'm just waffling now because I don't want to watch it and I don't want it to be over. This has been a great ride. Um, for those of you who want to see me react to more things, there are other things on my channel like The Leftovers, The Handmaid's Tale, Castle Rock. Um, I'm also currently watching Fargo. If you haven't seen the show, why not just watch it anyway and then you can join us in the reactions. It's actually a really good show, very different. Um, and if you want to have a say in which show will replace The Haunting of Hill House in the new year, then go to Patreon. I've put the little details down here. Go to the Patreon page, um, sign up. You only need to be a dollar a month um, to patron to be able to vote on, on new shows. And it'd be really nice to kind of keep our little Haunting of Hill House group together um, for some other similar programs. So all of the housekeeping is out of the way. I want to know what has happened to Luke. I want to know who Abigail is. Is she the Dudley's daughter or what the fuck? Is Mrs. Dudley real was another thought I had. I ha actually had it while I was watching it. And then I got distracted because it was quite an emotional scene. It was when she was in the little blue dress and she was talking to Olivia. It just suddenly struck me. Hang on a minute. The, the thought I had in a moment was, have we seen Mrs. Dudley interact with anyone who doesn't see ghosts? Like, in person. And I can't remember a scene with Mrs. Dudley and Hugh. We've only seen Mrs. Dudley with the children Stephen doesn't know when he sees ghosts, so he could have been chatting away to Mrs. Dudley. I mean, he thought there was a treehouse. And I just, and when her husband was talking about her, he was talking about the past. And it was an emotional conversation, so we wouldn't have known if he was upset because his wife had died. Oh no. I'm not saying Mrs. Dudley isn't real. I'm saying it did seriously cross my mind in that moment of a sudden like, oh, is this like a six, oh, spoiler for the sixth sense, move on. <laughs> is this like a sixth sense moment? We'll find out. Um, Poppy is evil. Hazel seems to not be. Hazel just seems to be a sweet little old lady. Might try to mind her own business. Strange. Anyway, this year this thing wraps up. Let's have at it. What do you think is in there? We're gonna see the other side of the door. Candy machine. That'll be something. Or a pony. pony. Not a pony. <laughs> this isn't working. It could be a pony. Wait. Something was moved. Hello? What? If there's a pony in there, it's dead. Say that word. You say it. What? There's no mold. You're not funny, Luke. Wait. I don't understand. right so is that gonna end up in the treehouse as well and why was Theo in the this fucking house I'm starting to understand this maze symbolism now it's like you think one place is somewhere and sometime and it's something else. I don't understand though. How they get in and out of the room, like they must get tricked. I am home. 
Oh, Steven. Hey. Hey. How was it? It was great. Kelly says hi. The boys are huge. You were missed. She's pregnant. <laughs> that little girl in there who's getting ready to join this family, one day she's going to ask about her grandfather and about her uncle Luke. What happened in that house? She's going to hear all sorts of stories and speculation like you did when you were little, but whose voice did you need? Whose story did you need to hear the most? She needs to hear this from you. Wow. This is for little Eleanor. Pulse. Are you looking at dad dead? Is that what this is about? They're calling the baby after Nanny. No play. It was a house without kindness. Fucking hell. Never meant to be lived in. All right with the drums. Not a fit place for people or for love or for hope. I think I know where to find him. Fuck. It's okay. Come on. All right. <gasps> oh my God, it's William. <sighs> Abigail. Oh God. <gasps> oh fuck. Oh, it's do oh God. Fear. Look at me. Fear is the relinquishment of logic. The willing relinquishment oh my God. of reasonable patterns. Oh my God. We yield to it or we fight it. But we cannot meet it halfway. Oh, fuck off, William Hill. Home. I am home. Stephen, go! Luke! Luke! Dad, that, that, that door's always been locked. Yeah. Only when it wants to be. Take off the hinges. How hard can it be? Look, I tried everything. Like maybe it was the two of us. Oh, my God. Stephen's gone in. Oh, Steve, wait! Damn it! I don't remember how I got out of the house. I, I, I don't remember coming back to California. I don't remember us reconciling. You never left the room. Well, of course you don't. Because you haven't written it yet. Normal people's lives are flesh and blood and muscle and bone, but not yours, darling. Oh, no. Your life is plastic. You are a plastic parasite. A plastic hack, aren't you, honey? So, of course, you don't remember how you healed our marriage or made our baby because you haven't really seen it, have you? You haven't shot it out in prose. Oh, she's kicking. Oh, oh she's hungry. She must be an eater like No, 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 no. This she is... is. My love, if she eats me from the inside and I burst like a blister, will you lose your mind? Like your mother. Steve. Please, please let me come back, please. Why are we seeing this? Oh my God, it's like what happened with now, where she sees the thing she wanted to see. And Stephen sees the thing. Oh, fuck. What do you think? God damn it. It's a perfect place to get clean for a few days. God. 
No. I have something for us. No, it's the heroin and the... One last time, just to get well before we get clean. I'm, I'm, I'm 90 days clean. 92, actually. Yeah, but that's not clean. You can 12-step it and collect your chips, but you're never clean. Never really clean. Because one day that needle's going back in your arm. Uh, you have an appointment with that needle? No, I won't. Baby, you already did. <laughs> well, Gordon was right. If you look long enough at the wallpaper, you can see that little girl. It's the little girl with the runny egg eyes. No, no, no! No! Oh, you fuckers. Rat poison. Again, they got him in the end. Steve, wait! <gasps> it was now with the puppy again, oh my god! What the fuck? Oh fuck. Dad! Who is Dad! He? Oh my god. Charlotte! Oh fuck. Shirley's gone. She's lost <gasps> that. Fuck! This is for you. What's the weirdest thing you guys have on the happy hour menu? Like the thing no one ever orders. Mm. On that note. Oh no, don't do it. I'm not. I'm just saying since we missed last call, do it. I've got all the makings of a mean martini in my room and want a nightcap. I did really good right up until the end there. You did. The mm. one yard line. Such a guy. I can't help it. It's taken 60 million years to develop the carnivorous biped you see before you. Thank you, anyway. It was nice to meet you. I enjoyed the conversation, but I'm gonna say goodnight. <clears throat> That's not what you said, though. You looked at my ring, and then I said the thing about the carnivorous biped, and you said, Let's see what kind of martini it makes. You walked out of the bar, crossed the lobby, into the elevator, and you had that martini, didn't you? The bills were screaming, and the children were screaming, and your husband just drifted out of focus, didn't he? And you were so far away from home for the first time in so long. Stop it. Oh, my God. A good person. You never did it again. Pauls, I just got to say... The shit she's giving Kevin. Come on. She put him in a hotel for pushing a woman away. We're gonna have words, Cheryl. We're gonna have words. Play. Never. But you never told him, did you? Fuck you. And even then, your anger at Theo, Kevin. Fuck you. Was wow. So righteous. The instant someone dies, they learn everything. Every secret thing. And when I die, I'm going to wake up in that hotel room and have to watch every single thing she did. Oh and that my scares God. her so bad. She hopes she'll die first. Dick Roll. Oh my 
god. Oh my fucking god. Oh. Surely. <gasps> <gasps> There was a reason for this. Oh, oh this is remember. horrific. I don't like this. This is really sc Oh my god, it's not her. And it's not real. Theo! Theo! I knew a man once. So he was trapped behind that wall. Afraid and guilty. And his voice left him. And he scratched, whimpered. Oh my god, it was the fingers were shredded on his own bricks until his scratches just sounded like rats and wall. It's the guy that we found in the book. Yeah, we know. He felt small. So small. But that was his dream. And when he woke up, it was tall. So tall. Always. That's why the stretchy man is to Okay. Wait. Just enjoy me. I'm loving you. Oh no. 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 Oh my god. Why is no one? Oh my god. <gasps> Fuck me.